Um, so I'm reading three poems tonight, starting with one from the Atlas called Robbie. I'm actually going to move this down more. When I was seven years old, I was taught that tongues could be used for more than talking in a basement with a boy seven years older than me, who took seven pills seven days a week. He spoke with a stutter, but his hands were steady when he held my shoulders and told me to close my eyes. His lips were always wet and his palms would often sweat, but his kisses made me feel special because mouths say what words so often can't. Like how his smile meant he was sad and counted the track marks on his mother's arms to pass the rainy days, or how my father's toothless grin meant he didn't think twice when I told him I wanted to marry my basement boy. Once he took me to see the crawl space beneath his porch and he promised to keep the spiders away if we squeezed our small bodies into the darkness, but he lied because the next morning I found spider bites on my waist where his fingers had been. I never knew why he liked that crawl space so much, but if I had to guess, it was probably because it provided some quiet to his very loud life. Just before our parents broke up, he stopped taking his medication. I became very afraid of the way he would cry and shake and tell me he loved me just before he pushed me around the way his mother did to him. When I was eight years old, I learned that love isn't made in basement kisses or crazed confessions and that it certainly isn't made in crawl spaces. And my basement boy learned that just because someone doesn't know better to begin with doesn't mean that they will never learn. Um, and so my second poem is called Compound Fractures. If I could, I would dismantle all 206 bones in your body and refashion you into the man I'd like you to be. One with a backbone, hands brave enough for mine to hold. I'd drill some sense into your head and shatter the cage around your heart. I'd rebuild you from the bottom up and make you the way you used to be. The way you were when we were kids, before we knew that rural eyes and small town lies could kill. Before you decided that our love was best placed in your basement and my attic. Before you shoved me into the places where flowers don't grow, with the spiders and mothballs like a cheap sweater or the toys you outgrew. You fill my place in your room and chest alight with sports jerseys and Playboy posters, but we both know you never played for those teams. If I could, I would press your heart between the pages of our hardcover books so that it might learn some compassion or understanding from the words around it, but I have a theory that it would just dry up, becoming as fragile as your pride, I can break it the way you did to mine. But in the end, I won't do a thing, because I am my mother's son and my father's pride, and they would be more unnerved by our hands wrapped around one another than the fact that I would break your bones like kindling to fuel the fire in my chest. And as for this love of ours, maybe if there's no place to put it, we don't need to put it anywhere at all. And then my final poem is called Starved. <laughs> I grew up hungry for affection and convention, so I fed my body hot air and cold water until there was nothing left, hoping all the while that the wolf in mother's clothing would see and desire to fill me up to the brim, but she never did, and I ran. I became an omega, wandering the forest of social anxiety and constructs alone. You could play my ribs like a xylophone and drink water from the dips of my collarbones, but I never let you. Because while my body was weak, my teeth were strong, ready to lash at any and all hands that sought to feed. Renouncing worldly things like food and touch, I became aesthetic. And you always told me that my mind was a few reacting short of synthesis, but that's because my mind has always favored complete combustion. Like gasoline in an engine, I've been exploding for the past 10 years, juggling imbalances and insecurity and impatience for people like you. My appetite was too small to swallow all of it, your arms around my shoulders, lips on mine, hands, that, hands and eyes that prayed before they prayed. My stomach, no bigger than a fist, was not fit for you. So with that in mind, I left you to your life and me to mine, and I never looked back. Thank you. All right.